And that's in total, so Deputy Sullivan, you're going first. Okay. Okay. Right, Minister, with others, I attended a meeting with parents of girls who had the vaccine, but whose lives are dramatically altered having taken that vaccine. And also, it doesn't say anywhere that these adverse effects would last indefinitely, which is what is happening for over 106 girls in Ireland. So, if you don't believe that the HPV vaccine is responsible, will you find out through an investigation as to why these 106 girls are chronically ill, all with the same debilitating symptoms. And it was heartbreaking to listen to their mothers describing how their daughters, bright, articulate, in education and in training, are now so ill with dramatically altered lives. And I've also been alarmed to read medical reports questioning that this vaccine has any effect on cervical cancer. One report said the vaccine will have no effect on 87% of HPV viruses that might potentially cause cancer, and that the causal link between HPV HPV and the later development of cervical cancer is far from definitive, that regular smear tests with no side effects can catch cervical cancer in time. Parents outlined uh, the side effects that uh, young women have had and the only common denominator that is in it is this vaccine and they're extremely concerned and we uh, raised a number of parliamentary questions. I genuinely believe that these uh, parents and young women have a very serious issue. I wouldn't be raising it in the doll otherwise. I have heard their stories. I've heard the debilitating effects that they've had on these young women and the, the emotional damage that they're doing to their families. And I would ask you, Minister, to look at having an independent assessment of this because uh, fundamentally there seems to be only one common denominator. Secondly, as well as that, that they would, uh, that the information that's been given to parents of young women about to get the vaccine, that it is fully informative, that there is no, um, I suppose, shorthand account. But in some countries, uh, this vaccine is not compulsory or is not given. And why are there other countries that haven't fully bought into that vaccine or have some concerns in relation to this vaccine? Surely then that we should take the cautious approach. We should look at, stop it and see, is it absolutely safe? Because in my mind, and I am far from uh, knowledgeable in relation to medical issues, but I do believe that there is a very serious fundamental issue here and that it is having a, a deadly effect on young women, on their lives and on the lives of their families. Great, Minister. If I want to me. thank Deputies Moynihan and O'Sullivan for giving me an opportunity to address the House on this issue. First of all, I want to acknowledge the concerns of families who believe their daughters have experienced adverse reactions and health issues after receiving the HPV vaccine. As the House will know, the vaccine protects against two high-risk types of HPV that cause 73% of all cervical cancers. I repeat that for Deputy O'Sullivan. Two high-risk types of HPV that cause 73% of all cervical cancers. And the link between HPV and cervical cancer is well established, and is as well established as the link between HIV and AIDS, even though some very odd people still seem to dispute that. It's estimated that the HPV vaccine will save 60 lives annually, annually, annually in this country. It also protects against genital warts and other cancers, including head and neck cancers, uh, which are truly awful. The vaccine used in the school immunisation programme is Gardasil, a fully tested vaccine which was licensed by the European Medicines Agency in 2006. I've been informed by the HPRA that up to the 9th of October, it had received 921 reports of suspected adverse reactions or events notified in association with the use of HPV vaccines. The vast majority have been consistent with the expected pattern of adverse effects for the vaccines, as described in the product information, such as gastrointestinal symptoms, malaise, headaches, dizziness, and soreness or a rash at the injection site. These are short-lived. I'm aware that the European Medicines Agency has commenced a review of the HPV vaccine to further clarify aspects of their safety profile, although the agency points out that this review does not question that the benefits of, of the HPV vaccine outweighs their risks. The HPRA is, partic is participating in the review, which aims to clarify aspects of their safety profile and is specifically focusing on rare reports of two conditions, complex regional pain syndrome and, and postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I have been informed of, of a project in Denmark which aims to identify possible causes or potential risk factors for adverse reactions from the HPV vac vaccine. It would not be appropriate for me to comment any further until the results become available. This study, however, follows a major uh, Danish-Swedish register-based study of a million girls from 2013, 300,000 of whom had the HPV vaccine. This study showed no evidence supporting associations between exposure to HPV vaccine and serious diseases. 
It has been confirmed by the Danish authorities that they continue to offer the HPV vaccine as a result uh, as part of their childhood immunisation programme. In the meantime, the European Medicines Agency has advised healthcare professionals that available data does not warrant any change to the use of HPV vaccines. Healthcare professionals should therefore continue using them in accordance with the current product information. Any changes to this advice will be made following the outcome of the review by the European Medicines Agency. Okay. One minute. One minute each. Okay. What has happened in Ireland has happened in Spain, the UK, France, Denmark, Sweden and Italy and there's now a European wide group for those affected. And I think it is significant that the Danish government are spending €940,000 for an independent investigation into the vaccine and the side effects and the experts involved have no ties to the pharmaceutical industry. I must admit to being very wary of the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, whatever good they do, they are really a profit making machine. I don't want to deprive anybody of a vaccine that is beneficial and I do support any preventative measures but the reality is that there are at least 106 girls in this country with very debil de debilitating symptoms and the common denominator is the vaccine that they have taken and these girls for them their lives are totally changed. They're not able to live normal lives like their peers. That has to be investigated. I think it warrants a meeting with yourself or a very high ranking official in the Department of Health or the HSC. And just finally, in 2009, there was a vaccine damage steering group report which Dr. Riley spoke at, and he was talking about Dr. the most important thing time. is to remedy the damage that has been done and provide the support that the person needs to live as normal a life as possible. I'm just asking where those recommendations are. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, I suppose just in the minute that I have, I know that the parents that have uh, come together, the great group, uh, have sought a meeting with, them, with the Minister, and I'm just asking the Minister to know, would he meet with a representative body of, the, of these parents just to outline the concerns they have? And I, I, I've gone through, I've scanned through he, he, the um, official response. You know, the word risk is there. And if there is any risk, no matter how minute it might be in terms of the, the, the proof and the examination of it by the, um, the authorities concerned, if there is a risk that even one young woman could have an adverse effect to the effect that the, the, the people, the parents have been outlining to us. If there's any minute um, risk at all, should not the state err in the side of caution and withdraw the vaccine until there is a full assessment of what is at stake because it the debilitating uh, condition that these young women have, it is frightening to listen to them, it is frightening to listen to their parents in relation to it, and I think that it does merit from the state and from the department and from the HSE a full investigation to park the vaccine until it, it can prove that there is no side effect. And I believe that you know that would be in the best interest of everybody. And I would attend. ask you, Minister, as well, I know that there's a request gone in for you to meet with a representative okay, group of the parents uh, towards the end of November. Thank you very much. Okay, Carl, Minister. Carl yeah, look, at I, I'm, I'm really very concerned about this whole debate and where it's going and, and the comments made by some of the deputies op opposite. You know, uh, I really, really very alarmed to hear, hear that we're, we're getting into this into this space again where there's where Deputy Sullivan is, is almost implying that there's some sort of plot from the pharmaceutical industry against people and, and it's all about them making money and this isn't you know based on evidence or scientific advice I'm really concerned about it and I'm really concerned to hear um, uh, a Fianna Fáil TD um, calling for a vaccine or a drug to be withdrawn uh, without uh, scientific evidence to back that up that really does bother me because we've been here before we had a similar uh, scare around uh, the MMR causing autism. Some people still believe that. Uh, children developed autism at the time and parents um, uh, connected the vaccine to autism because that's around the time that those symptoms appeared. And some people still believe that, believe it or not today, even though the doctor who came up with that has retracted and been struck off, even though there's no scientific evidence to report it. And as a result of that and scaremongering and irresponsible behavior by, by people who should know better, some people got measles mumps and rubella because their parents didn't vaccinate them and of course we have a similar issue, issue, issue where the jury is still out uh, on the issue of narcolepsy uh, as to whether that was caused by a vaccine at the time or whether it was coincidental whether it was another cause at the time uh, a virus or some other cause that, that affected it what do we know about this vaccine we know that it does prevent 
cervical cancer, which is an awful cancer that kills loads of women every year. Uh, we know that it causes genital warts. We know that it or prevents genital warts. We know that it prevents head and neck cancers and also penile and anal cancers uh, in men. We know and we have scientific evidence and fact that that is the case. We do not know if these long-term psychological uh, and physical effects that some people are reporting are any more common among girls who have had the vaccine as opposed to those who did not. And the Swedish-Danish study done so far, which went back over a million girls, 300,000 of whom had the vaccine, did not see any higher incidence of any diagnosis or disease in the 300,000 who had the vaccine uh, as opposed to 700,000 who did not. And I really would appeal uh, to members opposite, uh, deputies and senators, to be responsible in your comments on this matter. You know, I really would appeal to you to do that because you know, scares around people using medicines and vaccines really do cost lives. And any decisions that are based on this have to be based on the scientific facts and the epidemiological evidence and nothing else. And no meeting with me will change that. These decisions are made based on scientific and expert advice, and I really would appeal to deputies to be responsible in your comments and actions around this issue. The next item is in the name of